Hey guys, what's up? It's Jr. Cuber. In this video, I'll be showing you the easiest way to solve last two centers on big cubes. So for a lot of people, last two centers on like the 6x6 and up is pretty tricky and sort of takes a long time. So hopefully this tutorial will make last two centers pretty easy and fast. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and start out with the 7x7 and then we'll move on to the 8x8. And once you know these two, then you're basically set for any last two centers uh, case that you encounter on any cube, basically. So before we get started, there's one fundamental commutator that we need to learn. And for those of you that don't know, a commutator is just where you do one algorithm or one move, and then you do another algorithm or another move, and then you undo your first algorithm and undo your second algorithm. And that's the basic idea of a commutator. So here is an example of the commutator we're going to be using. It's going to be used to switch around pieces in the centers. And just as an example, here's what it looks like. And as you can see, we've switched these two pieces and done absolutely nothing else to the rest of the cube. So here's how the commutator works. Let's say we want to switch these two pieces. The first thing we do is line them up in conjunction to each other so that we can replace this piece with this piece, just like that. Now once we've replaced this piece with the other, we can then do a U and bring it over to another layer. Then what we can do is bring that layer up, and what that does is that restores this row. Now what we can do is do a U prime, bring this layer back into its correct place, and then we undo, just like that, and then we do a U and undo this. And there we go. Now this can be done with edges as well. So if we want to replace this edge with this edge, then we can take this edge and put it up here where it needs to go. And we can rotate it to another layer. And bring that layer up. Rotate back. Bring the first layer back down. Rotate that layer back down. And then do a U. And now we've switched these two pieces basically. So now that we know this commutator, then last two centers will become a lot easier. So let's go ahead and get started with the 7x7. So here on the 7x7 we have all the rest of the centers done and we're on last two. Now the fundamental idea of building last two centers is if you're on an odd layer cube, then you build the center row first and then you do this and then you start by building out to one half of the cube, it doesn't matter which side, and then you go to the other half of the cube like that. So basically for me, what I'm going to be doing is starting with this layer and then doing this half of the cube first and this half of the cube second. So we'll do this row first, then this row, then this row, and then this row and this row. So the first thing is to get the center row. This is pretty easy. As you can see, we already have three pieces in their place. Now we need to find the two pieces that go here. And since this piece is an edge center on this middle 3x3 three three row, if we look on top, we can find one right here. And so if we turn it here, you can see we can put it in place, move the layer away, and restore that. Now we just need one more, and that would be right here. Ignoring all the rest of the pieces around it, just this piece. We can bring it down, move it out of the way, and restore. So now that this is done, this is our foundation for building the other two sides. We'll start by now getting this layer here. We can see that uh, for this layer, we already have a row of three, and we just now need to get in these two pieces. So I can see that uh, this piece here needs to come here. You can see how this piece can come up to here. Now when we are building last two centers, we want to be able to take advantage of this empty space that we have. So what we can do is if we rotate this layer up to be able to use these two layers to put in this piece, you can see that there's nothing here. But this piece can easily be moved to here just by rotating, it, rotating the piece up, turning it up to that spot, and bringing it back down. And now it's here. Now we can turn the layer and bring it in like that. Now we just need to find this piece here. And you can see that there is one right here. So we can just bring this layer over and take this center and bring it up. Now that this row is done, we can bring it down, move it out of the way, and restore, put it back. So now we just have to do this last row here. 
And as you can see, we already have a row here with three pieces, and this is really good. Now, we're going to be using another method for building last two centers that is going to come and play a lot more in the bigger cubes. And so I'll give you an example. We need to, we need to get this center edge piece from here to here. You can see that this piece, when brought down, will come in line here. So how do we get it here without destroying this middle layer? Well, what we can do is simply by hiding the layer, you can put this edge center across from it. And now you can see this piece needs to just come from here to here. So how do we do that? Well, just like this. Since this layer is already formed, what we can do is bring that layer up, then do a U2. So nothing is going to happen to this layer, and then we bring it back down. And you can see nothing has happened here, nothing has happened on the other sides, and we've put that piece in place. Now this can also be applied to these layers, as well as these layers. And I'll show you that a bit later. So now that that piece is in place, we just need this corner. And this is pretty easy. We just have to bring this around and then take this corner, bring it up to form the bar and put it in. So now this half is done. Now we can start building this half. Now this is going to be a lot harder because we don't have as much empty space to work with. But anyway, let's go ahead and work through it. So the next bar we're going to build is this one here. I can see two pieces already matched up here. Now the next piece that I can see that's going to be the easiest to bring in is this piece here, and it's right here. So the way we're going to do that, as you can see, if we put this bar here that we're working on, you can see that the spot this piece needs to go is here. So if we put it there, and then we hide it, just like that, and then go ahead and bring the layer into place, and bring it back down, then we have it in line. Now we need to get these two outer pieces, and this is done in a very similar way. As you can see, the piece that needs to go here, if we just do a U, we can see that it would be this piece here. So if we put the piece where it needs to go and then hide it and bring the layer back to where it was, bring it back down, then we can easily just put the piece in place right there. Now the same can be done for this piece here because this piece belongs here. So we can do the same thing. We can hide the piece, bring the layer into place, and restore it. And here we have our bar. Now what we can do is rotate the empty slot up and bring in the bar, just like that. Now we just have one bar left. And we have all of the pieces on top that we can use. And right now I can tell that we're only going to need to use one commutator. Just one commutator for this. And if people already know that commutator and use it, you might be wondering why, how that is possible. And it's actually really easy. First thing we'll do is we'll take this corner and put it up there. As you can see, when we take this row, and rotate it down here, you can see that the piece needs to go here. So what we can do is put it in that spot. And when we restore, it brings it down into this layer. But that's okay because when we rotate this over, we can just bring that up like that, bring it over, and put it down. Now since these two pieces aren't in their correct places in relation to each other, we're only going to be able to put in one of these pieces, and I'll show you why. So first we're going to do the same thing that we did with the center edge where we rotated the middle layer up like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put it over there. Now you might be thinking that we could just bring this layer up and rotate it around, but that actually doesn't work because as you can see the green layer that got rotated up is now in this spot. So with that note we can bring both of the layers up like that and now when we rotate it doesn't do anything to the green layers and we can restore. Now you can see that that piece has been put in and we can now insert the bar there. And now we just have one commutator left. And for this we use the commutator algorithm that we just learned. So we put the two pieces in their same place in relation to each other. We bring this layer up. So replacing this piece with this piece. Then we rotate the piece over to another column. Bring that column up to restore this bar, bring that over, put the bar down, bring this bar over, put that down. And as you can see, we are now done with the last two centers. That was very efficient and would be very fast if done at full speed. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the 8x8. Okay, so moving on to the 8x8, this is going to be very similar to the 7x7. The only difference now is that we don't have a center 
bar to sort of guide ourselves. But basically the green side is going to go here, since blue is here. And so we can just start building this half and then move on to this half. So the first thing I see is this bar. If we rotate this down, then this puts it in place for this half. Now we just need this center piece, which is right here. So what we can do is put it into the place it needs to go, hide it, bring the layer over, and restore, which builds the bar. We can put it in place. Now the next thing I can see are this, ro this bar here, which is already almost formed, which will go here. Now since this piece of the bar is already taken by this row, we can do is find a piece like it in the top layer. So if we go three over and two down, a green piece, we look for that. Well, three over and two down, there's one right here. So if we hide the layer, that gives us this bar, which we can then rotate out of the way and bring the layer back. Now we can bring the row into the top layer. Now we just have to put in this piece. And I can see that there is one right here because it's in the two by two spot and there's one in a two by two spot in the outer corner right there. So we can go ahead and put it in the spot it needs to go, hide that row, bring this row over, and bring it back. And now we have this, which we can put in. Now we can see that this row is now almost formed. We can put in the corner here, which is right here. We can put that in immediately by just hiding the corner piece and bring the layer over and bring it back. And now we just have to find this piece, which we can use this piece right here. So since, it's, since it's in the one by two spot, when we rotate down, we can see that it would fill that area. So what we can do is put it in a spot, hide the layer, bring the row over, restore the layer, and we have our bar, which we can then insert like that. Now we're just gonna do the exact same thing we did for this side, but for this side, but we have a little bit less space to work with, so we're gonna to need to use some commutators. So we'll start out with this bar here, which has three pieces in it, which is always a good start. This piece here can come up to here. As you can see, if we rotate over and bring it up, this piece actually needs to come here. So what we can do is hide that layer, not to break anything up, and then take this piece and put it up where it will eventually go in the end and then bring it back down. And now we can rotate over. This is our bar here we're working with. Take this center, bring it up into place, and now it matches. We can rotate it out of the way and restore. Now we can go ahead and solve this piece. As you can see, it's in a two by three spot. So if we rotate the U layer, we can see, okay, there is a piece in the two by three spot right here. So we can hide that piece, bring the row back, and restore the layer, just like that. Now we just have one more, which is here. And I can see that since this is in the one by three uh, column down and we rotate, then we can see, okay, there's a piece in the one by three column that's green. So we do the same thing, hide it, bring the row over, restore the layer. We have our bar, we can insert. This now is the next thing I see. We can rotate that out, bring it in the top layer. Now, as you can see, since this piece has not been put in and there is a row already here that is green, we don't have an empty space that we can bring up, which means we're going to have to use a commutator for this piece, but not for this one. We can see the piece that needs to go here is this one. So we put it in the place it needs to go, hide the layer, bring it back, restore. Now we can go ahead and take this layer and put it in. And there's nothing more we can do with it. And I like to save all the commutators for the end, so we won't put it in now. Let's go ahead and build this last layer. And something I actually immediately notice is that there is nothing more we can do to build this layer any farther. The way I can tell is that we've already gotten this, these two pieces, and in, this, in these two rows, we've already gotten one of the pieces there, which means we cannot do um, the move where we bring this layer up and this layer up and do a U2 because we need both of those spots to be empty. And the same with these two rows here. We could do that, but we need both of the spots to be empty. And so that means we're gonna to need to use a total of three commutators for this, which is definitely not ideal, but it's what we're gonna to have to do. So the first one we'll take care of is this one. We can take the piece that belongs there, put it into the same row as this one. We rotate up, rotate over to another layer, bring that layer up, rotate back, bring this layer down, rotate back, bring that layer down. 
and you can see that piece is filled. Now we can go ahead and fill in this piece with this one right here. You bring it over so they are in line. Bring it up, rotate over, fill that spot, rotate back, restore, and restore. And now this is our last commutator. Rotate the layer up, turn up, back, restore, back, restore. And there is our last two centers on the 8x8. So we're going to go ahead and do one more walkthrough solve on the 8x8 just to make sure you understand everything there is to know about last two centers. So this is our green face again because blue is here. So we'll start by building this row for this half. First we need this piece here which is in the 2x3 spot. If we look up here it's right there. Bring it in, hide, restore. Let's find this one also in the 2x3 spot. There's one right here. You can put it in the place it needs to go. Hide, turn, restore just like that. I'm going to be moving a bit faster for this. Um, then we'll go ahead and build this row here because it's almost actually fully formed. Once again we need a piece in the 2x3 spot. There's one right there. We hide, turn, restore. And there's one right there. We can put it in. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and build this bar next uh, for this row. If this comes up here then we'll need a piece here. This is the piece we'll put there just like that. The piece that needs to go here is here. We can put it there, hide, restore, and then put it into place just right there. Now we'll go ahead and do this row. We'll get this 3x3 three three piece in here, which is right here. So since um, this piece is down here, we need this piece to be down here. So we can hide it and then turn it down there, restore, and then put it in like that. Okay, now we'll get this piece, which is right here. Put that in. Now we'll get this piece, which is in the 2x3 spot again. If we turn it around, we can see that the piece in the 2x3 spot is right there. We can see that piece right there, so we'll put it in like that. And then we need the uh, piece here, which is right here, that piece. Put that in just like that, and insert it in. Okay, now we're getting down to the grind, the last two layers. This is where it gets more tricky. So just to make things a little bit more complicated, uh, we're going to go ahead and do this bar instead of one that's already been built with a couple pieces. If this piece has already been put in, we'll go ahead and put in this piece. So we want to track this piece around to here and put in that piece there. Now we'll work our way in. Because we have an empty space here, we can put in these pieces here. Put in that one first, hide it. If we turn this out and rotate down like that, we need a piece to come in right there. So we'll put the piece that needs to go there, right there, then we can do that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put in this piece. This piece is going to come down to here. Since there's not a green piece next to it, we can't put that one down there, but we can put this one in. And the way we're going to do it is we bring up the two middle rows and then do a U2 and restore. And that puts it in. And now we just have one commutator left for that row. Now we'll go ahead and build this bar along here. We'll go ahead and put in these pieces. As you can see, the two of them are in, are, are in line right there. So we can go ahead and take them out of their place and put them across just like that. So these two pieces are going to come down to here. And the way we're going to do that is we'll bring up this row along with this row. Do a U2 and restore. And now we're going to go ahead and put in this piece, which this piece is going to come down here. And we'll do that the same way. Now, we just have two commutators left, and so we'll put in this one first, bring it up, turn over, bring that layer up, turn back, restore, and restore. Then we'll finish up with this. Just like that. And there is our last two centers for the 8x8. So that's really about it for last two centers on big cubes. There's not really too much more I can say. If this was helpful to you, then make sure to give it a like. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave in the comments down below. And I'm sure somebody will be able to help you out with any problems that you're having. So that's about all I can say for last two centers on big cubes. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you haven't already done so, like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.